Welcome and thank you for joining us. My name is Robert Van Barneveld and I'm the chair of the Autism CRC. And I'm very pleased to be here with you this afternoon as uh, we take part in this special event, which is the launch of the Inclusion Ed program. And that's Autism CRC's new uh, professional learning uh, community for educators. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the Honourable Dan Tien, MP, Minister for Education, uh, who will be addressing us in just a moment. Um, and he's going to be officially launching uh, Inclusion Ed this afternoon. Joining us in the audience are colleagues from the Australian Inst Institute of Teaching and School Leadership, uh, the federal and state departments of education uh, from all over Australia and New Zealand, in fact, uh, the Positive Partnerships team, the Social Ventures Australia Evidence for Learning team, and representatives from our education and research and development partners, schools across Australia, educators, parents, and of course, students on the spectrum who have been part of our journey from the beginning. Just to give you an overview of how uh, events will proceed this afternoon, um, some background on Inclusion Ed. Uh, I actually remember when uh, the idea for Inclusion Ed was first um, presented at one of the Autism CRC stakeholder days. Uh, it's the culmination of six years of work uh, and it's from across our school years program. It's been co-designed with educators for educators. Um, and what Inclusion is, Ed does is it provides evidence-based and research-informed teaching practices and tools uh, that is designed to support diverse learners in inclusive classrooms. So shortly, I'm going to introduce uh, Minister Tan uh, to officially launch Inclusion Ed. Um, after the, the launch by the Minister, we will hear from Autism CRC School Year's uh, Program Director, Professor, Professor Suzanne Carrington, uh, and she's going to be joined by the Inclusion Ed research team. Uh, that includes Associate Professor Michael Whelan, uh, Dr. Keely Harper-Hill, and Dr. Jeremy Kerr from the Queensland University of Technology. And they're going to give us a brief demonstration of the Inclusion Ed platform, uh, and they're going to explain how it was co-designed and developed in deep partnership with educators, and they're going to provide an outline of the evidence base behind the teaching practices and resources. Then we're going to hear from uh, Marsden High School's uh, Senior Inclusion Coordinator, Trudy Bartlett, uh, who will give us an educator's perspective on the site. And uh, she will explain why inclusive classrooms are so important for both teachers and students. Finally, I'm going to hand over to the Autism CRC Chief Executive Officer, Andrew Davis, and what he will do is facilitate a Q&A program uh, with the research team. Now, from an organisational perspective, I'd like to let you know that you do have the opportunity to submit text questions, uh, and you can do that by typing your questions into the Q&A uh, pane of the Zoom control panel, uh, which you can click on at the bottom of the screen. It's got two speech bubbles as an icon. Uh, if you could please submit your questions uh, to the speakers via the Q&A panel rather than the chat panel, that will make sure that we can see them. You can send your questions at any time during the presentation. Uh, we will collate them and address as many as we can during uh, the Q&A session with the research team at the end of today's presentation. Before we begin, I think it's important to acknowledge that uh, we're not really in uh, ordinary time for teachers, students, or any of us. Um, we have had severe impacts from the COVID-19 pandemic. And as a result, educators, school leaders, parents and students have all been called upon to uh, make major adjustments uh, to their lives and the way the, their education is delivered. The challenges for schools, teachers and parents and uh, the need to work together to support diverse learners has arguably never been greater. Having developed Inclusion Ed as a national platform uh, with its detailed teaching practices and resources founded in evidence, uh, together with its online community of practice um, that's accessible to all educators regardless of location, we believe Inclusion Ed will play uh, a very valuable role in addressing these challenges, both uh, in the current times and well into the future. 
So on behalf of the Autism CRC, I would like to thank all of the educators, parents and students who have engaged in our school years program. It's been a very important program within the Autism CRC. Um, and this has been a lot of work over the past six years. Um, Inclusion Ed's the culmination of all of this work. Uh, and we hope that you're able to enjoy the benefits of these resources uh, and being part of the Inclusion Ed community in practice. So with that, uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce the Honourable Dan Tien, MP, Minister for Education, to say a few words and to officially launch Inclusion Ed. The coronavirus lockdown has renewed our appreciation of teachers and principals. Parents who have become de facto educators in the home have a new re newfound respect for teachers and the importance of having classroom learning. This is backed up by the evidence. Nearly half of Australian children and young people are at risk of adverse effects on their educational outcomes, nutrition, physical movement, social and emotional well-being by being physically disconnected from school. If online delivery were to last for two terms, Low SES, students with complex learning needs, including students with disability and Indigenous students, could lose more than six weeks of learning in numeracy and in excess of four weeks of learning in reading. That is why principle number one of the COVID-19 National Principles for School Education says that education is best delivered by professional teachers to students in the classroom on a school campus. As we resume classroom teaching, we must renew our focus on supporting our most vulnerable students so they do not fall behind because of COVID-19. Inclusion Ed will play an important role in addressing these challenges at a national level. Inclusion Ed is a new online platform that assists educators to support their students, whether they are at school or learning at home. Co-designed with educators for educators, Inclusion Ed provides evidence-based teaching practices and tools to support all students, including those with learning difficulties or neurodevelopment disabilities. Parents can also utilise the free tools to support their children to learn from home. I would like to thank all of the teachers, parents and professionals who have been involved in the co-design and development of the platform. You all play an incredibly important role in supporting our students, not just during the pandemic, but every school day. I'm very pleased to launch Inclusion Ed. Thank you, Minister Tien, for uh, launching Inclusion Ed. Your support and enthusiasm for Inclusion Ed is greatly appreciated, and you have always been a tremendous supporter of the Autism CRC as a whole, so we thank you for that. It's now my privilege to introduce our school year's program director, Professor Suzanne Carrington, and she will be joined by the Inclusion Ed research team from the Queensland University of Technology. They include Associate Professor Michael Whelan, Dr. Keeley Harper-Hill, and Dr. Jeremy Kerr. Now, each of these individuals has made an incredible contribution to Inclusion Ed. They have been extremely passionate uh, about the program, and they've worked alongside teachers, policy makers, parents, students, web developers and other researchers to take Inclusion Ed from a mere uh, good idea to a major new online learning community for educators. Suzanne and her research team are joined by Rhiannon Kemp, um, who is the head of inclusion from Ripley Valley State Secondary College. Uh, and I'll hand over now to Suzanne, Michael Keeley, Jeremy and Rhiannon to uh, provide an overview of what they've achieved in the last six years. Hi everyone, my name is Professor Suzanne Carrington and I'm the School Years Program Director of the Autism CRC. I'm based in the Faculty of Education at QUT. Hello, my name is Michael Whelan and I'm an Associate Professor in the Creative Industries Faculty at QUT and I'm the Inclusion Ed Project Leader. I'm Dr Keeley Harper-Hill I'm the Research Associate with the School Years Program of the Autism CRC, based here at QUT. Hi, I'm Dr Jeremy Kerr, Senior Lecturer from the School of Design, QUT. Hi there, I'm Rhiannon Kemp. I'm from uh, Ripley Valley State Secondary College and I, in my role, I'm the Head of Inclusion. 
I'm going to tell you a bit more about the school years program and what our vision has been for this six years of research. Our focus has always been on supporting educators in real classrooms and we've been uh, very um, collaborative over the last six years in working with our education partners and over 300 plus schools over Australia. We were very keen to move our research away from clinical based research and research that was happening in segregated special type classrooms or um, schools. We wanted to move to doing research in inclusive classrooms with teachers because we knew that teachers were really struggling to support the diversity of learners that they have in their classrooms, including students on the autism spectrum. In 2016, one of our first research programs in program two was the school um, needs analysis uh, project. And with that project, we conducted research with over 1,500 participants all over Australia to find out what parents, teachers and students thought the educational needs were of students on the autism spectrum. The participants in our study also told us that they really wanted to have more information about evidence-based and evidence-informed resources and teaching practices to support them to be more confident in their work in schools. So that became a really strong part of our work over the six years of research in the school years program. Our focus was strongly on inclusive education and we drew on the framework, the principles and the guidelines of universal design for learning. I think uh, Inclusion Ed is gonna be a great platform to illustrate how um, inclusive education works in a school, because I think what's lacking at the moment is what that actually looks like for teachers who have never actually been in a place where that is common practice. We had a strong focus on collaboration between families and schools. We wanted to really reinforce that partnership uh, that we see as really important as part of an inclusive approach to education. And we really valued the voice of the autistic community right across our program of research. So we conducted research with over 300 uh, plus schools and worked with school partners right across Australia. Our research teams were multidisciplinary, um, including researchers that had teaching background, and researchers that worked as psychologists, um, therapists, um, all, a whole range of different um, types of professional experiences that supported the research across those school programs. So we conducted our research with teachers, specialists, parents and students and a lot of our research work involves the student voice. So the focus of our school years program saw education program research teams working in real classrooms. We knew that teachers wanted to hear from other teachers to find out what works in classrooms. They really wanted to uh, find out what resources worked, what types of teaching practices, what types of approaches they could uh, use across their whole school. So this is what has really culminated in an inclusion ed that we're launching today. So you'll find that there's many great resources uh, that have been developed with researchers, with teachers. And we know that teachers, parents and specialists will modify and adjust those resources and teaching practices and share them back with their learning community. We often found that many of those strategies worked for many students in the classroom. So that supported the work that we had done on um, using the universal design for learning framework as part of our research. So now I'm going to throw to Jeremy Kerr, who's going to tell you a bit more about the research and the design process that informed Inclusion Ed. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Um, I'm Jeremy Kerr, and I'm gonna take you through designing Inclusion Ed now. And what's really distinctive about our platform is it's based on a foundation of co-design. Co-design involves uh, engaging as many stakeholders as we can for this platform from the very beginning to the very end. We're taking it through the design, develop and implement stages, uh, involving stakeholders in a series of workshops at the very front end to testing the actual platform as it's in its iterative stages 
and then also giving us feedback on our final platform before release. Integral to designing the platform has been a series of in-person and virtual co-design workshops, which were conducted at the front end of building the platform, working out exactly what teachers and additional members of the, the cohort that would be engaging with the platform wanted this platform to be and the possibilities of exactly where it could go um, and the directions that perhaps hadn't been done on a learning platform before. In this process, we engage classroom teachers, specialist teachers, principals, policy makers, parents and students on the autism spectrum, all integral members of the community through which we were trying to represent and create change in this space. Our participants involved government schools, Catholic education, specialist providers, independent schools, and we engage people throughout Australia. And this was done through the technology that we use for our virtual workshops. We connected with teachers and other stakeholders in Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, Tasmania, and Western Australia. It's great that it's co-designed with um, various stakeholders involved because I think um, in, in working in a school, you generally aren't only the only person working with students, you're working with a group um, of stakeholders to cater for whatever their needs are. And I guess in our school, our um, vision speaks to this through keeping the individual at the heart of our decision making, because we see that as the essence of catering for support. Once we engage all our stakeholders and finished our workshops uh, throughout Australia, we began the process of analysing all the different information and insights that our stakeholders provided us with. Through a series of playful workshops that created makeshift designs and involved them talking about what their needs and desires for the platform would be, we went through a process of analysis, thematically analysing key insights, um, which then informed the design of the platform itself. Through the data analysis, we then designed a journey map which really fleshed out and explored the possibilities for the platform and the sort of interactions that people wanted to see, the forms of media that they wanted to engage and what sort of recognition they wanted from the platform. Once the platform had been prototyped, we then took it out to our stakeholders to get feedback, initially through videos, and then we engaged them face to face, having them use the interface and give us real-time responses to what their experience was and how it could be improved and further developed in uh, second iterations of the project. And now to take you through some of the content of Inclusion Ed, I'll hand you over to Dr. Keely Harper-Hill. Thanks, Jeremy. So when teachers come to the Inclusion Ed homepage, they're met with a number of principles that underpin the, the development of the site, as well as an instructional video of how to use it. What teachers told us was that they wanted the specific practices that had come out of our research projects upfront. They wanted to be able to find practices efficiently. And so the practices are arranged in a number of series or you can search. So teachers want to be able to discover and choose their classroom practices quickly and easily with brief information, videos that lets them know whether or not it's worth them going in and having a look further. What teachers really wanted was to be able to implement the practices in a process of professional learning. When we unpicked this process, we found that it closely matched the Australian Charter for the Professional Learning of Teachers and School Leaders. And we're grateful for the work that we have done with AITSL in integrating this within this site. We've designed a five-stage process to help you implement new practices. The first of these is to plan, set goals for yourself and for students, implement the practice, and then reflect on your implementation and refine your delivery of it. And finally, to share that with colleagues in the community. Under the plan section, teachers will find what they need to prepare to either make small changes to their practice or to introduce entirely new practices. What teachers were really clear about was that not only do they have to set goals for their own practice, 
but that in order for professional learning to be of value and meaningful, they need to be able to see outcomes for students. And so teachers have under set goals the opportunity to write student goals as well as their own goals. Having set their goals, teachers can put the practice into play and under apply the practice, there are a number of steps that enable teachers to do this. As we move towards the end of the professional learning cycle, teachers get to reflect and refine on the goals that they have set under B above and to also work out how they're going to amend those for next time. Finally, teachers have the opportunity to share their experience in implementing their new practice. And I'll pass over to Michael. Thanks very much, Keely. When we go to the home page of Inclusion Ed, underneath the instructional video on how to use Inclusion Ed, you can see these four big green squares, and they represent the core themes that emerged from the research, and they're the core themes that inform the design and delivery of the Inclusion Ed programs. The first was diverse learning, which Suzanne covered in our introduction. And that's linked to a set of vision and values about engaging young people on the spectrum, their families, teachers in classrooms, and the broader school community in the development, in the co-design of this resource. The two I'd like to speak a little bit in detail about are evidence base and the learning community. We found in our research, a lot of our teachers raised the issue of not knowing whether resources they were downloading from the internet for classroom activities were drawn from an evidence base. And often in a, in a one second search, you might have a quarter of a million hits of resources. So there's no real way of screening that. In the Inclusion Ed project, all of the practices use an evidence base drawn from the program to the, the school-based programs of the Autism CRC. So those research outputs have informed every one of the practices that you'll see on the Inclusion Ed website. And we list all of the projects, the publications and the researchers that uh, were involved in the development of that content. I guess what Inclusion Ed provides is um, the evidence in a practical and accessible way. So if you look at um, practices across like uni universal design for learning in that approach, it gives you um, examples and um, videos and things like that to help illustrate what that could look like and how that might work inside a school environment. And that could then be um, applied by the people looking um, at this content on how they might transfer that across to their own context. If we go back to that front screen and we look at learning community, this is the most exciting and innovative aspect of Inclusion Ed. A lot of uh, web publications are interactive only to the extent that you can navigate the pathways implicit within the design of the website. The exciting aspect of Inclusion Ed is that when you join and log into Inclusion Ed, you're joining a community of practitioners from right around Australia and New Zealand and potentially right around the world. Once you've implemented a practice, you have the opportunity to reflect on that publicly within that learning community. And for example, say, uh, this worked really well with my uh, middle year students. And in fact, I tried it with my senior school students. Or another uh, teacher might pick that comment up and say, that's really interesting. I might try that and see how it works. Uh, so th there's that interplay between practitioners. And normally that might only happen with teachers in your own staff room at your school, but now it can happen on a national level as each of you bring your own experience, your own knowledge and your own experience of practice to building on the knowledge base at Inclusion Ed. The other aspect of sharing that's very exciting within the learning community is that your comments and your feedback can be directed to the researchers who are involved in these projects. So if we click on one of the core research projects down at the bottom of the page here, 
we can not only read the details of the evidence base in terms of research methods, results and conclusion, we can actually meet the researchers. And your comments will go back through the moderators at Inclusion Ed and may be directed directly to the authors of the research that informed that practice. So that's it for me. I'm now going to hand you back to Professor Suzanne Carrington. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. So I'm just going to uh, give you a little bit more information about how we feel that Inclusion Ed can, can really work really well, um, not only to support teachers, parents and educators in their work together, but particularly for our school communities who are in rural and regional contexts. My background obviously is as, as a teacher and my original teaching uh, position was a, a, a teacher in Roma. And I always remember feeling very isolated and not being able to access uh, professional development in the way that my colleagues in the city could do. So Inclusion Ed is a really great um, platform. It's a, um, a, a platform of community of learners, as Michael has so nicely described. And it can be used for uh, people as individuals who want to really uh, learn and, and update their practice. But it can also be used for groups of teachers or groups of educators working together and perhaps working in collaboration with their parents. It could also very easily be used to support a whole school approach. As Keely uh, described in, he, in her presentation, the practices, the teaching practices are actually organised in series. So there might be an opportunity for whole schools to look at particular series of practices around uh, for example, the way that they manage um, students' learning and their behaviour in a classroom. And a whole school might be able to um, engage in the resources and the materials as a whole school approach. There's lots of um, opportunity to support um, collaboration between home and school. So we have a, a more consistent way of working between school and home. And as Michael has said, it's not just a great um, suite of resources for teachers to be able to access. It actually provides a really great platform to support an ongoing process of professional learning and sharing between uh, people in schools. So thank you very much. And we look forward to working with you in the future. Enjoy it. Uh, inclusion is a journey. It's all about learning and we're all in this together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Suzanne, uh, Michael, Keeley, Jeremy and Rhiannon. It is just fantastic to see how much uh, research has been completed and the level of collaboration and innovation that's gone into um, this platform and its practices. That's what cooperative research centres are all about, bringing people together to produce exceptional out outcomes. So thank you very much uh, for your presentation and everything you've done. It's now my pleasure to introduce Trudy Bartlett who is the Senior Inclusion Coordinator at Marsden State High School. Trudy is also a graduate of our Sylvia Roger Academy Future Leaders Program, which we are exceptionally proud of. Uh, and we're delighted to have her here with us this afternoon to share her perspective on the importance of inclusive classrooms. Over to you, Trudy. Good afternoon. I'm proud to be here this afternoon as part of the launch for Inclusion Ed. When I first heard about the program, I immediately wanted to be involved. I'm the Senior Inclusion Coordinator in the Special Education Unit at my high school. In that role, I oversee the students from grade 10, 11 and 12. As part of my role, I'm attracting their attendance and engagement at school, liaising with parents and outside providers, communicating with teachers in the mainstream areas to differentiate classwork as well as assessment to a level that they can achieve. As someone who is autistic myself, I believe that inclusive classroom environments are of utmost importance for students and myself to achieve the best that we can. The significant need for resources like Inclusion Ed has been highlighted by our current environment, which has significantly changed as a result of our current circumstances. Launching Inclusion Ed will provide teachers with a wealth of strategies that will help support their autistic students in remote learning as well as in the classroom. When I was a student, I was undiagnosed and misunderstood. I was consistently being sent out of class because I was considered to be a naughty, disengaged student, rather than someone who has the ability to achieve great things. If my teachers had used different strategies to engage me in a way that I could learn 
and then I would, could be successful. If my teachers had an understanding of the range of diverse learners and how to make appropriate adjustments, both my academic results and my mental health would have been much better. I believe that a resource like Inclusion Ed could have made a world of difference for me and students like me. In my experience as an educator for over 10 years, there are teachers out there who want to be more supportive and have more inclusive classrooms. They just don't know how. This has been highlighted by my role as Inclusion Coordinator and a Case Manager of Autistic Students. Since having access to Inclusion Ed and its amazing resources, I think that this will really help to bridge the knowledge gap for teachers across Australia. By signing up to Inclusion Ed, you become a member of a community of educators from across Australia. This makes me feel that I'm supported and not alone on this journey. And together with a focus on tangible ways on how we can support the diverse learners that are out there, we will be able to have a better application of best practice across whole school communities. With more sensory friendly and inclusive classroom environments, it will better set up diverse learners for post-schooling study and work options. For some students, their neurodivergence has been a barrier in learning in traditional classroom settings. Inclusion Ed provides their teachers with the resources to provide them with a more functional way in which they can learn, which will improve their academic outcomes, but more importantly, will improve the mental health and allow them to believe that they can achieve the goals that they aspire for themselves. My passion for promoting inclusion in schools is because I don't want students to have the same schooling experience that I did. I see numerous students walk into my classroom every day feeling and saying that they can't achieve the same things that their friends can because of their diverse learning needs. I am passionate about ensuring that all students get the education and the support that they need to achieve their aspiration. And I believe that Inclusion Ed is the perfect platform to make this happen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Trudy, for your honesty and insight uh, and for your passion for inclusive education. It's greatly appreciated and we've enjoyed your involvement today. Finally, I'd like to introduce the Chief Executive Officer of the Autism CRC, Mr. Andrew Davis, uh, who will finish the afternoon by facilitating a question and answer session uh, with you. So over to you, Andrew. Thanks very much, Rob. I'm Andrew Davis, and I have the honour of being Chief Executive Officer of Autism CRC, and I'm very pleased to facilitate our live Q&A this afternoon with uh, Suzanne, Michael, Keely and Jeremy, who you've all heard of, uh, from this afternoon. Thank you to everyone who's submitted a question so far. We'll go through as many as we can of your questions in the time we have up until five o'clock. But before we move on to the questions, I just wanted to uh, uh, say to those people who had some uh, trouble uh, with some blurry slides and so on through the presentation, apologise for that. Uh, we're all dealing with this uh, world of communicating and getting lots of uh, lots of things down the pipelines around the country at the moment. Uh, we will make the slides and a copy of uh, the presentation that the project team's just given available to you soon after this webinar, and they'll be on the news link that'll be posted tomorrow as well, so you can uh, get them from there. Um, as I said, we're about to go into the Q&A, and if you haven't submitted a question yet, there is still time. You can submit your question by typing it into the Q&A pane on the Zoom control panel, which Rob explained earlier. You'll find that as the two speech bubbles uh, as an icon on the bottom of your screen. Please use that uh, rather than the chat uh, icon uh, so that the team can spot it and bring it to our attention. Now, on to the first question. And this one's uh, for Suzanne. Suzanne talked about uh, universal design for learning and it's supporting all those with diverse learning needs and styles. Suzanne, one question. Is this purely autism related or does the information apply across numerous inclusive ed needs? So thank you, Andrew, and thank you everybody for joining us this afternoon. Um, as you may know, um, and if you don't know, Inclusion Ed is informed by um, six years of research and involved about 25 research projects that have been um, supported and funded by the, the Autism CRC. So the research that we um, are sharing with you and the, the, the teaching practices and, and all of the ideas actually come from the Autism CRC research. 
But because we've had such a strong focus on um, supporting an inclusive approach to education, we found through uh, lots of our, our research and lots of our data and, and findings over the years that what worked for children or young people on the autism spectrum also worked for many students in the classroom. And because our focus was on supporting um, um, teachers and educators and parents and students all working together in an inclusive approach, we very much drew on the principles of Universal Design for Learning or UDL as, as many of you um, know about that framework. So that approach has informed just about everything that we have done um, through the whole uh, program of research and everything uh, we have, have funded, the focus has always been on supporting teachers who are working in inclusive settings. Thanks, Suzanne. Uh, a second question, and perhaps this is one that you can uh, pick up on, Keely. Uh, congratulations on this initiative and the development of research-informed resources and practices. Will there be resources applicable to early childhood settings in schools? Absolutely, absolutely. So um, we have a planned program um, of, and rollout of practices um, that is that are coming and that um, in the meantime, there are a lot which are middle years at the moment, but we have um, certainly just over 20 practices that um, will be coming in the next six to eight months, which are all focused on early years. Thanks, Keely. Um, one for you, Michael, a very simple one. Uh, we've got some people that are very keen to uh, join the inclusion ed community. And the question is, when can we join? Thanks, Andrew. You can join straight away simply by going to the inclusion ed website, which is inclusioned.edu.au. You can um, uh, log in or register uh, and you provide minimal information, simply your email address and a sense of what sector you're from, whether you're a parent, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a principal, um, and that's all you've got to do. And then basically by participating, by starting to use some of the resources and going through that five step process that Keely uh, outlined in her section of the video, then you can start uh, implementing and then reporting on that process and joining and, and that enables you then to share your perspectives on the experience of implementing that practice and sharing that with your colleagues and after today as the um as the site becomes more used by teachers around the country the opportunity will be there to respond to other teachers ideas and their experiences of using practices as well and build the knowledge as a community of practitioners thanks michael um one for Jeremy now. Uh, are staff able to export slash download a report of some kind from Inclusion Ed that provides proof of how much professional learning they have completed? Yeah. And in brackets, just wondering for ease of logging PD. Thank you. Okay, I mean, that's one of the, the um, I think one of the best features of this platform is the fact that through co-designing with teachers, we kind of really worked out what would motivate people to be involved. There's so many resources online um, that have been thrown at teachers. Teachers are deprived, of, you know, they're time deprived. They're, they're struggling to get through. Um, teaching everyone in the classroom, let alone, you know, focus on individual um, learners in the class, like at this level. And um, basically we, we realized that it is about recognition. It was one of the huge things that came through with our co-design sessions was this idea that they, they could get something and get recognized for the work and the going beyond the call. Um, in many cases and really focusing on the student needs. Um, so we do have a certificate that's downloadable. It's something that can be used for PD. It's something that can be used to talk to parents about what they're doing. Um, and it's certainly, yeah, one of the, the really strong features that, that came out through the co-design sessions and probably something that wouldn't have emerged if we didn't do it through co-design, I think. Thanks, Jeremy. Um, Suzanne, where would you begin using Inclusion Ed in your school?
Sorry, I just had to unmute. Um, well, I think you can use inclusion ed in a number of different ways. I think it's it's very um, it's ideal for teachers who are just doing their own professional learning at home and thinking about the students that they have in their classroom and and how they can you know best support um, inclusive practice in the way that they're teaching. But it can also be used um, as like perhaps a whole of school approach or you know early years or middle years or a, a group of teachers who are working together who have developed their own community of practice. It could even be used um, in a school cluster approach. So in you know many of our conversations with teachers and with schools over you know many years, you know, this has been in development. Uh, we've had lots of conversations with um, schools, particularly schools in more you know, rural areas where they don't have as much opportunity to access professional learning. And because it is online and, and we have this sort of lovely uh, process of plan, set goals, apply the practice, reflect, review and then share set up, it's very much designed to really support that community of practice. And so you can do that at, at an individual level, a small group, a whole school, you know, a cluster level. We certainly also see that it's uh, really applicable to, for example, pre-service teachers who are learning about inclusive education in their teacher education degree. Um, could be very much, you know, used to inform their learning and perhaps, um, you know, assignments or tasks that they are involved in in the university sector as well. Thanks, Suzanne. While I've got you, um, you talked about educators, teachers there. Um, what about parents? So there's, there's quite a lot in Inclusion Ed um, that is very much sort of there designed to support that collaboration between educators in schools and parents. An inclusive approach really values the input, the collaboration, you know, the support of parents. We don't see that happening independently. And it's been very interesting, you know, we know many parents have been, um, had the challenge of supporting their the young person over the last sort of couple of weeks at, at home. And some people still may, may be doing some of that, that, that type of support. So there's many resources in there, not only to support the homeschool communication, but also to help a young person, for example, set up, you know, work systems, how to manage their time, how to sort of structure, you know, their work when they're trying to um, work on an assignment, for example, that's been provided by a teacher. And, and how the parents uh, can work together with the teachers to actually help a, a young person to be success, successful at school. Thanks, Suzanne. Um, back to you, Michael. One, one, one question. Uh, you talk about, about the community of practice and that it's a two-way conversation and so on. Um, are teachers able to do more than, you know, just send text messages and so on? For example, if they recorded their implementation of uh, a practice on video, could they share that through the site? Um, teachers are able to share really any media they wish with one-on-one -on -one with colleagues across that network. Um, obviously, if they've you know videoed work with um, students in classes obviously that's a different matter but if they were going to be doing private journaling of processes they were doing and their opinion and perspectives on things absolutely they could share that content um, the more interesting ramification of that though is passing those experiences up the chain to the researchers who've created those resources so the idea that a teacher through their experience of practice could gather perspectives uh, ideas new ideas for implementation or adaptation of an individual resource they can forward that to the uh, administrators of the uh, inclusion ed site who will then periodically be pulling together packages of material and forwarding that on to the individual researchers involved in developing that content. And I think that loop and that larger conversation where the practitioner is communicating directly with the researcher brings a wonderful um, ongoing um, development for a resource, for all of the resources within the Inclusion Ed site. And I think that's one of its really unique contributions to um, uh, this space. Thanks, Michael. Um, 
Jeremy, you've talked about co-design and you talked about it a little earlier in the, in, uh, the response to the question. Um, it can be a little bit of a buzzword at the minute uh, and uh, just used as a label for consultation. Uh, do, you, do you want to give us a bit of a picture of how what co-design meant in the context of this project? Okay, I, I love co-design because I've spent 20 years as a designer and all of a sudden I don't have to come up with the answers. Uh, it's, it's really, uh, it's, it's flipping the whole way that we, we come up with concepts in that we, we basically present problems to people but we create experiences where it's not about asking you what is your perfect website, it's actually about working out what your needs are, what your experiences are and then developing a vision collectively, it's really starting with a, a blank slate as opposed to consultation. Consultation is often about validating someone's view of what we should have. Um, whereas co-design, we basically had a blank slate. We didn't say we were gonna have a platform. We didn't say it was gonna be a certain way. Um, it evolved through co collaboration with all the stakeholders. And it was a step-by-step -step process. It was having an open mind, seeing what themes emerge, see, seeing what motivated people to learn with PD and what was a successful learning experience for many teachers and, and how, you know, what motivated someone to really um, do something. And um, so it, it's, it's a wonderful experience because you don't know what you're going to discover and you don't know what you're going to have emerge. And um, certainly you can look at a, a platform like this and sort of think, oh, you know, it's a website. They, of course they build a website. But the whole concept of co-design is starting from scratch and just working with the stakeholders. Okay, thanks, Jeremy. Uh, Suzanne, one for you. That's actually and, and Keely. Uh, it's actually literally coming up as I'm reading it here. Is inclusion ed mainly for the benefit of teachers, or would education support staff, occupational therapists, speech pathologists, etc., also benefit? And in terms of teachers, is it for all teaching staff? or for school leaders of inclusive practices? Well, I might start and then maybe Keely can add to, to what I say. Um, we really think that inclusion ed has something for, for everybody. Um, in, you know, we know that as part of an inclusive approach to education, teachers are working with the support of speech pathologists, you know, OTs, um, parents, they particularly if they're in a, a, a more rural um, school, they might have um, visiting sort of consultants that are there, either uh, connecting with them via telephone or doing you know a couple of visits across a year. So it's really designed to bring people together to look at particular needs of. Um, young people in classrooms and I see that there's a lot of questions coming up is it just for kids with autism so obviously it's very much focused on kids with autism but we really think that there's a lot here that can be can really provide um, educators and, and teams working together with information that can support the diverse range of learners in in their classroom so I might just stop there and hand to Keely because Keely is a speech pathologist and that's one of the really great things about being a researcher in a cooperative research centre. We come to this work from all different uh, backgrounds and, and different areas of knowledge and experience to work together to develop, you know, these great um, ideas, I think. Thanks, Sue. Um... I think that one of the most exciting things about inclusion ed is the fact that um, whether you are an educational assistant, whether you are a classroom teacher, an inclusion teacher, whether you are um, a, a school member of school leadership, everyone gets to see exactly the same model, exactly the same um, style and information so that everybody in a school community has the same opportunity to adapt and adjust how they interact with students, how they support all students. Um, and that, um, for me, as a, um, a speech language pathologist who has always wanted whole school communities to come together, that is quite possibly one of the most exciting things. So it is yes for everyone.
Thanks, Suzanne, and thanks, Keely. Um, Suzanne, a, a long question, which I'm going to try and paraphrase. Um, it says that the deficit model of disability gained a lot of traction in the 80s, and um, the language associated with that of itself was about, it became a barrier uh, to looking at things like education from a social model perspective. Acceptance or tolerance is not inclusion. Also, everyone should be aware of autism. Shouldn't we use inclusive words like capable, informed, instrumental, valued, etc.? Yeah. So, yeah, a really good point. And we have, because we have taken this very strong, um, you know, inclusive approach to everything that we've done in, well, everything that we've done in really the autism CRC, but particularly in, in program two, we have very much, um, I guess, drawn on a social cultural model of disability and a human rights um, model of disability. And, you know, just listening to what Keely was saying there, because it, it can really inform a community of practice, it is a way to not only um, sort of challenge, but to um, try and encourage people to avoid using some of the, that deficit laden language and and I saw there was also a comment that came through in the chat about um, addressing people's beliefs and values so inclusion is very much about you know developing an inclusive culture it's about supporting um, respectful ways of working with young people with parents you know with diversity of people in a community and so yes we would be doing you know everything that we can and we hope you know we've worked really hard as a team of researchers but also particularly around the team that's developed Inclusion Ed to really support, you know, a very inclusive and respectful um, language that's based on a set of clear uh, values. And, and so there's information in Inclusion Ed. I think uh, you saw when Michael was giving the little rundown, there's um, about four green boxes that are at the top there about our values. And so we still talk very sort of explicitly about what those values are and they were all informed, you know, from the design based approach as well. Thanks, Suzanne. Uh, we've got just a few minutes left before uh, our time is up and thank you everybody for giving your time this afternoon for this important launch. Uh, question to you, Keely. Is there any content for students with uh, getting ready for work experience or developing related skills? Absolutely. Um, we have a, a number of practices that um, will be coming um, up on Inclusion Ed. And again, these are ones that are in the pipeline and they are based on um, one of the early research projects that was led from Curtin University. And it's the development of um, a program called My Way Employability. And it came from a project that was looking at better outcomes for post-school transition for, for students on the spectrum. So, um, and that will link to an external um, website that it will be freely available. That will actually be a tool that students can um, use to look at things like, um, you know, their interests, uh, career aspirations, um, identifying what their goals need to be in, a, in order to move towards those. And on Inclusion Ed, we have a series, uh, we will have a series of teacher resources to help them um, teach students uh, in preparation for that using the My Way project. Thanks, Kelly. I think uh, last question now, and it's uh, one about the future. Uh, is the research that's contributed to Inclusion Ed ongoing? And what is the anticipation in regard to adding new practices over time? Uh, I might pick that up a little. And yes, um, there are new practices under development all of the time. And for the duration of 2020, every two or three weeks, there'll probably be another batch of practices uploaded uh, to, the, um, to the Inclusion Ed website. And that will ideally continue uh, as the website grows and gets traction within the education community. The more people that participate, the more need that's there, uh, will be a wonderful uh, way of expressing 
uh, the, the expression of that need will be a wonderful tool to invite more contributions from researchers to publish their work in Inclusion Ed. So yes, it's definitely a growing space. It's Michael, I think that I think that's a really important point that this is uh, this is almost uh, the beginning of the start or the start of the next phase. Uh, it's been six years of work uh, led by a lot of people, but particularly uh, the people you see in front of you now, to bring together uh, the practices that are, have come about from all the work that underpinned this. And uh, we are looking to complete further work that's underway at the moment, complete the, the development of practices based on that, but also build on the platform into the future. Um, that brings us to the end of the Q&A session for today. And I wanna thank everybody who has submitted questions and indeed to everyone who's joined us this afternoon for what's been a special launch, certainly from our point of view, and we hope it has been from you, your point of view also, six years in the making. I'd also like to express my personal thanks to Professor Suzanne Carrington, Associate Professor Michael Whelan, Dr. Keeley Harper-Hill and Dr. Jeremy Kerr for their time today, but more importantly, for the incredible contribution to Inclusion Ed, working alongside teachers, policy makers, parents, students, web developers, and other researchers to deliver this major new learning community online for educators. I also want to reiterate what Rob said earlier on and thank the thousands of educators, parents, and students have engaged in our school years program over the past six years. Your contributions have laid the foundations for Inclusion Ed. As you can tell by today's event, we're incredibly proud of Inclusion Ed with its detailed practices and resources, evidence-based and research informed, together with its online community of practice, which is accessible to educators, regardless of location across Australia, across the ditch or around the world, uh, the team's only had time to give you a brief tour of the platform today, so I encourage you to go from this event and take a tour of Inclusion Ed itself. And you can do so by going to inclusioned.edu.au and start exploring the richness of resources that are available. And please also share it with other educators in your personal and professional networks. We didn't get to all the questions. If you've got further questions arising from today or into the future, then please submit those. You can email them to hello at inclusioned.edu.au. Thank you, thank you once again for joining us today. Thanks to the team. Enjoy your evening and please stay well. <laughs>